Derek Peters with Joy105.com, and I am here with the one, the only, the legendary Mrs. C.C. Winers. Ms. Winers, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey. It's been okay, so I know we don't have much time, so I'm going to hop right into it. So um, a few weeks ago, we posted a clip that went viral of you explaining why you didn't sing the song, I Can Cast a Spell, with your dear friend, the late, great Miss Whitney Houston. Uh, there was a lot of mixed feelings on whether or not you were right or wrong. And I was wondering, could you please give advice to up and coming Christian artists who are dealing with the pressures of blending their music with the secular, whether it be artist or the style of music and how to stay true to who they are as Christians and artists? Well, I just live my life according to the word of God. I fear God and not man. And um, it's more important to me of what he thinks of me than anything else and anybody else. Um, I love his people. I love, I know that I'm here to serve his people, um, but not at the expense of misrepresenting who he is. And so I fear God. And so my 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 advice to everybody as believers, we have to understand that we're believers first. Um, I'm a believer who happens to sing. I'm a believer who happens to be a mom. I'm a believer who happens to be black. I'm a believer who happens to be a grandma, you know, but I'm a believer first. My my life is not my own. And so I live my life for one, and that is Jesus. And it, it just it keeps everything pretty simple. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Um, you mentioned yesterday in your interview with Ms. Monica Pearson that at a certain point you decided to take your children out of school because you mm -hmm. went on tour and you didn't want to come back home and not know who they were, right? And so yeah. I guess to the average person, they may think that you were sacrificing an important part of their social growth, but it worked out. You did the right thing. Your son is a pastor. He and your daughter both work in the church. So my question to you is, what advice would you give to like a famous parent on how to raise their children in a reality in which unfortunately they will never have a, a a regular childhood, if you will, because of the stardom that their parents hold? Um. Well, I think you have to realize that no matter what you do, who you are, famous or non-famous, um, God is a God of order and mm -hmm. he he must be first. And then, you know, then then your family, your first ministry is to your family. So you can't let your career your popularity or non-popularity um, help make you lose sight of that. You know, right. uh, when, when I had to make a decision, my husband and I both made the decision together that um, it was God's will for me to, to do the, the tour that we were doing, um, but also understood the importance of where our kids were and also the time I would be away that it was best for all of us to get on a tour bus. And we didn't, mm -hmm. we we had to make the sacrifice of bringing a teacher in to make sure they stayed on schedule and made sure those things were um, the things that they needed. But but on the road, they, they gained more social skills, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we were, they learned a lot, you know, that they couldn't learn in, in sitting in school. So it was right for me. It doesn't mean it's right for everybody. That's why we right. have to be yeah. led by the spirit and we have to take every decision before the Lord and and make sure that he, that's the leading that he's giving me. You know what I'm saying? Because one, 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 one size is not for everybody. It doesn't fit everybody. Every every plan is uniquely different for for every family. Absolutely. So I got two more and I'm going to get out your way. So okay. to the point of um the music and, and blending and staying true to who you are as a Christian, we see artists um like, for example, um Fred Hammond and Kirk Franklin, they both have songs with Kanye West and they're Christian songs, right? But of course, right. Kanye West is this polarizing figure. And on one hand, it's like, ah, like you're mixing with the worldly, it's a business move, whatever. But on the other mm -hmm. hand, you kind of wonder like, well, who else is going to reach a Kanye West, right? He wants to right. work with you as a Christian artist on a Christian song, and you have a chance to do that. How do you feel about those kind of collaborations? I'm not here, to, of course, to ask you to condemn them or, or otherwise, but how do you right. feel about those kind of um, collaborations with secular artists? 
Well, um, again, you have to be led, but the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Mm. So non-believers, <laughs> believers, um, secular artists, non-secular artists, you know, every breath they take belongs to him too. So even if, even if they're not, if they're not fully committed to following Christ, they they God God loves them. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, and and Jesus was friends with sinners. He never compromised, but right. He hung out with them. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. He He went in with a purpose. Wherever He was, He was the light. He Absolutely. brought He brought hope. So I think as believers. Um, again, we all have to be led, but, but we're, we're here to be the salt of the earth. We're here to bring life. So wherever God sends us, um, I believe good fruit will come from it. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. And then very last one, this is a fun one. You grew up in Detroit, Motown. Um, yes. and you talk about how growing up only gospel music was allowed in your mother's household. And subsequently when you had your only, ch your own children, only gospel music was allowed in your household. Mm -hmm. But if you don't mind telling the audience, what is like your guilty pleasure? If you hear it over the radio or in the mall, you're going to bop your head and sing along to music that you may have heard growing up. Oh, I, I mean, I love, love good music. One of my favorites is, um, I mean, Stevie Wonder is still one of my favorites. Stevie As a Wonder. kid, you know, That's a good you point. are the sunshine of my life, you know, because God created love two um i shouldn't two he, he he is love he created love and so yeah. the world can imitate but he is the creator of it and so i love songs again the, the requirement is just for them to be clean yeah you know, you, i don't ever want to listen to something that disrespects or dishonors god in any That's way fair. and as long as that is your your compass in what you listen to and what you watch and what you take pleasure in, um, making sure that it doesn't grieve the Holy Spirit, making sure that it's not offensive to God because of a beat. You know, oh. you don't you don't get a pass because, oh, they can really sing, but they're but they're singing things that are dishonoring God. No, no, mm, I have yeah, to protect yeah. my I have to guard my heart and my mind because when you open up the door for the enemy, you don't get a chance to to dictate the consequences. You don't get a chance to say, oh, I'm just taking that in and not that in. No, 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 no. When you open up the gates, everything with it comes in, Absolutely. you know? And so music is is very, it's it's a strong tool that can be used for God's glory or it could be used for the enemy's um, glory. And and so as a believer, I'm very disciplined in what I listen to. But I love good good music. I love yeah. great music. I love um yeah, different variety and styles. But but my criteria is that it it honors God. Absolutely. And it doesn't even yes, have to be, it doesn't even have to be about him. You know, if I'm talking to my husband and and it's a song that is uh again clean but honors the the beauty of love and relationship. God is for that. He created marriage. He created, but he, you know, he's, he doesn't want us listening to songs that's going to um, create lust or something yeah. that is ungodly, you know? And so, so you have to be the gatekeeper of your soul. Right. Got you. You know, but, that's but yeah, nice. Stevie wonder, I could go on and on with, with, with beautiful, clean, powerful songs that has you know made me smile over the years <laughs> absolutely well miss winans i want to thank you so much you are as you know one of the greatest <laughs> of all time like i was telling you last Aww, night my mom you. had you on repeat and um, <laughs> you're such a big part of my childhood and you're really a big part of like what shaped my music taste so I want to thank you so much. This has been a great interview you for me. You got it. Thank you. I really you. appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Honored to talk to you, and I, I'm just hoping nothing but the best for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You have a good you one. You got it. Bye-bye. Goodbye.